All right, so we're going to get started. I want to uh, welcome all of you this afternoon on this uh, beautiful Saturday afternoon. We're here today to uh, host a uh, special uh, focus meeting on the Akusasna election law. Um, by requirement of the amendment process within the law, we're required to have a council quorum, so we'll be calling an official meeting. So I will call the meeting to order. We have attendance, acceptance of the agenda, rules of order, and then we'll turn it over to the uh, members of the Akwesasne uh, working task group who have been working on the Akwesasne amendment, amendments to the Akwesasne election law. So we have uh, seven members of council here today. Eight. Uh, the other members of council are not able to join us. If they will be, uh, they will be shortly. Um, the agenda today will be the uh, background information as well as a review of the Akusasna election law. And then the working task group will take uh, questions from the floor. Uh, the meeting is a constituted, quorum constituted meeting, so I'll ask that uh, we please all be respectful. Um, I will turn the uh, facilitation over to Joyce King, who is the Director of Justice. She can uh, take your questions. Uh, we ask that you please raise your hand prior to any questions. We ask that uh, all your questions please be relevant to the Office of Election Law. Uh, this is a specific meeting for that purpose. And uh, that is it. So that's all our agenda. If I could just have a motion to accept the agenda. Motion by Connie, second by Karen. All in favor? Okay. All right, so I will uh, turn it over to Joyce King, as I mentioned, and she will go through the background and the review of the amendments to the Upsustain Election Law. So, so rules of order. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just give me one second. Is there any against accepting the agenda? I'm, I apologize. No. So there's none against or all for. Okay, Joyce. Thank you for coming home today. I just want to go over the rules of order. It is MCA community consultation meetings are an opportunity for community members to hear information from council and assist council with issues that affect the community. The principles for the MCA meeting rules is based on respect for each other and all attendants are expected to behave respectfully at all times. These are the rules. Meetings will start on time. The community will be asked if they choose to continue past a specified time. Personal issues will not be dealt with in a public forum, such as, as this meeting. at this meeting. Personal items can be dealt with on an individual basis with community members by appointment through the Mohawk Government Office. Sorry to have, your, sorry to have my backs to you. I apologize for that. Can you put that full screen, please? You know what? Um, if I do, I'm going to lose. Yeah. Okay. So if you have any questions or comments during the meeting, raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged by the chairperson. The chairperson will keep note of the order that community members indicate to be acknowledged. Please keep the questions and comments relevant to the point of order within the agenda. Be considerate of the time used. A list will be made of issues you wish to address to council, and if answer cannot be provided at the current meeting, the issue will be taken back to council table for further discussion and follow-up. Any questions? No? Okay. All right. So, we're going to go back to the agenda. Introductions. Um, the, there was an MCR that was passed in August of 2015 asking a working task group be formed and that MCR gave a mandate to individuals within, within the Mohawk Council of Akuzasi to look at the present Akuzasi election law and that present Akuzasi election law was put together in 2005 after there was a number of issues that happened afterwards and a number of issues were, um, you know, there was always appeals, there was some ambigu ambiguous um, clauses within the, within the election law itself. And then um, we didn't know which, which ones were penalties and what can the court do once an appeal happens or the election appeal board as we know it. 
So what we did was look at all those issues. Um, there were some challenges in the past. There were the court orders. Court orders told us to change cer certain things within the election law, and we did. Subsequently, that was sent to the community for a vote. It was turned down. So now here we are again. We're trying to get something that would be um, more user-friendly and less procedural-wise. Even though there are some procedures in there, we put most of them into a schedule. So it's not a part of the law. But um, in the end, this is your, this is your chance to tell council um, any recommendations you want to make. Introductions to the working task group, like I said, who was appointed. There was at first the executive director. It started off with um, Heather Phillips, and now it's um, Jordan right here, as well as somebody from Justice. So I'm the one who decided to participate because the Justice Coordinator had too many files already. Then um, we had ex officio, and those ex officios were district chiefs, one from each district. So sitting as an ex-officio was Chief Connie Lazar, <laughs> also Chief Ryan Jacobs from Ganadigo, and Chief Louise Thompson from Goanoga. So as well, we had, we had the electoral officer. She was also a, she was also a um, ex-officio. So all those people didn't have voting power. The only ones who did, and later on, um, in once we started meeting, I think it was about six months later, the government support worker, who was Lisa Francis Vendick at the time, came to our came to our meeting, and the MCR appointed her to be permanently. So after she had left, Chelsea Francis is here, and she's the one who is now the um, person sitting in the working task group. So the working task group, just to mention, there's only three people who can vote on an issue, and that would be Jordan Wapis as the executive director, Joyce King, myself, who is the director of the Alcuzelsi Justice Department, and then Chelsea Francis, who is the government support manager. Otherwise, um, the other ones are providing guidance to us, and we wanted to keep that so that there wouldn't be any conflict of interest. I mean, they participate, they can listen to our discussions, they can add, and we certainly do look to them for guidance. But in the end, just to let you know, we only have those three voting members. So let's get started. Background. Okay, this doesn't work as well as I want it to. Okay, background. We did a survey. We did a survey on, um, and, and we released it in October 27, 2016. We gave it 30 days to, to um, try to get everyone to do the survey. It was an online survey, it's called a monkey survey, and then when we, when we, um, really wanted the survey to get the numbers up. We did paper ballots and surveys, I mean surveys, uh, paper surveys, <coughs> and we tried to get that to all the administration buildings. Our goal was 350 people to do the survey. And Jordan, do you want to talk about the error, margin of error? Yes, so in the previous meeting we had a question about the uh, survey data and the sample size. Um, and what specifically the margin of error was. So in this survey, the margin of error was 5%, which means basically, um, reasonably, you know, with, with any response, you're plus or minus 5%. So if something was a yes and it was 60%, you'd know with confidence that within the sample, it'd be 65 or 55% of the population would agree. So that's basically what that means. So that was a, one of the questions that we've been asked. Um, and what we did was we looked at the eligible voters that are, that are in the community and those that actually voted and identified that they were eligible to vote. So that's the, those are, that's the sample and that's the numbers we used to come up with that margin of error. So our first survey question was, are you a member as defined under the Upper Destiny Membership Code? 
we had 372 people doing the survey said yes, they were eligible members, and six said no. The other thing we asked was, are you currently an eligible voter as defined under the Akwesasne election law for MCA elections? 65 said no, they weren't eligible, so we're thinking that they're probably living outside of Akwesasne. And then 314 people said that they were eligible voters. Then we asked, please indicate your preferred composition of district chiefs for the Mohawk Council of Akwesasne. It was six, nine, 12, or other. And the most um, support that you can see in this chart was uh, 141 people said that they preferred nine district chiefs. And so the question number four said, should the chiefs be selected by district or at large? And I, I just wanna discuss this a little bit because there was 179 people who said it should stay at district chief and 187 said chiefs at large. The, that was so close to each other that we were wondering, you know, how can we balance this? And it was, um, and, and Chief Louise Thompson came up with a great idea. She said, why don't we still nominate people from among our district, which will be Ganagago, Gisnaine, and um, Goinoge. Yeah, the three. And then everyone can vote on them. For example, if um, Lacey lives in St. Bridges and she's nominated to run as an eligible candidate in Ganondigo, she would be nominated by her district, but Sny and Cornwall Island and Ganondigo all would be able to vote for her. So that's, that's the compromise. So you're nominated from your district but you're voted at large. And I think this was a good compromise to ensure that we met the criteria as outlined in the survey. Five, I believe the following group, group should be eligible to vote when selecting leaders. District only was the, was the top contender here. There was, that was 111 people. <coughs> Some people said only people resident in so-called the northern section of, of, um, of the reserve, including Canada, or else Akwesasne and those living in New York State, or anywhere. So those are the real results. Joyce? Yes. Can you just go back to number four and just um, provide a little bit more information on um, how that works? So everybody would have three votes? Per yes. district, and then the top three cumulative would then be those elected representatives. Correct. So you, would still have three Every, reps you still have three district. reps per you district. You would still have three reps. So actually, people would have ten votes. Um, one for Grand Chief, and they could vote on each district chief. So, if Pat, you wanted to to vote who you think should be a representative in Snai. That's how we wrote the election law. So that was a chief at launch. But you wouldn't be able to nominate, you know, if you were in the district of Goinoga. Okay. Pardon? Yeah. No, that's correct. Yeah, you couldn't nominate from any other district but your own. In the other one, should secure online voting be used as an option? And we, I think we got really good support to have e-voting. E-voting would be the electronic voting, and you could, be, you could vote. We're going to have two days of voting. This is how we designed it. We had two days of voting. It would be, it would be Thursday and Friday we would have e-voting. 
So you could get on your computer, you could get on your smartphone, and you can vote. You have one chance to vote. And once you vote, all, all the candidates, up to 10 candidates, um, then, and then you're locked out. So you vote three for the island, three for Saint, three for Snowy, and then one grand chief. And after that, you're locked out. Once, once that's done, the information of who voted will go over to the polling stations beginning Saturday. And at the polling stations, they'll know who already voted, and you will not be allowed to vote again. And, and that's how we're working it. Can't be no cheating. Nope. Sounds good. Like That's fun. Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 But what will happen is um, you won't get to vote again in a paper ballot if you change your mind. Because we're not going to know the results. Once you vote in the e voting and you say, oh, you know, I really want to vote, I didn't vote for Cornwall Island and I want to do a paper ballot. No, or you're not going to be allowed because as far as we know, the only thing we're looking at um, during the polling stations is that you voted already. Yeah. So it's your choice, it will be your choice. It'll be your one vote, one, one chance to vote for any of the districts. Yes. So this would be the same vote, it'll be just using your um, status And your date of birth. And your date of birth. What should the minimum age requirement on the day of elections for a chief on MCA be? And we and it stayed the same. Eighteen years of age or older. So that's what people prefer. Okay. I have a question on the And your date of birth. birth. And your date of birth. And yeah. that will tell whether you're a member or not? We, we are the ones who send um, every eligible voter's name to the e voting company. So and you still have to use your name. You yeah. still have to use yeah. your name, your, your bad your number, your your number, and your date of birth. Okay, so there's, there's nothing fraudulent about that. No. We, we are the ones who give the voters list to the e-voting company, and then um, they're the ones who have the electronic system to say, you voted, you didn't vote. And, it, and Pat, it's, it's an option. You know, people may still go to the polling stations on that Saturday and yeah, do the paper. Like and this helps us. It's only those who are eligible to vote will be able to do e-voting.
Yes, we, um, we tried that already. We tried that already. And you know how people go into, um, they have one mailbox and 10, 10 people use the same mailbox. We know a person that opened it up, wrote down the code, and started voting for something. So either way, right? And I think that's by sticking to the, uh, the polling stations, it avoids a lot of having to worry about secure online voting. Because the reason for the polling stations, from what I understand, because I used to speak with my mother about it, who was the, uh, one of the people that worked on those things, it ensures an environment where not only can they tell who's doing it, but that you have an, you have an environment that uh, you're allowed to make your own decision without any influence. And there's security there to make sure that happens. Online voting, somebody can go and say, this is what you're going to do, you're going to vote. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the reason for the polling stations, it, it, it allows you to make your own educated decision. It's hard to replicate that. So am I a fan of modernizing? Yes. But modernizing in the right direction in which we ensure that everybody gets to choose their what they want. Well, that's what this forum is here for, mm -hmm. for you to make recommendations. The, this is a, the survey that, was, um, that we did in the community. And now uh, you, your recommendations are important because council's here for you to listen. So you want to Yes. I don't um, think that it's all impossible. I, I think that there is to modern technology a way to safeguard that. Um, and I would expect that because it's such a vital, <coughs> uh, vital component to the law, that a lot of security would be right. But I know that there's probably the ability for the election, uh, the electoral officer to issue some sort of password or pin code that's only valid, say, for the next. 30 minutes, right? So you call in, verify that this is the person calling in, and then they um, provide a pin or something. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, yeah, there's, there is the current laws where, you know, like a husband probably knows, or a wife probably knows everybody in the household's band number and birthday, right? That's what they think. Theoretically, you could go and vote five times in one person, right? But if there's a way to verify that, I think that's you know, The other thing, mechanism that can go in there is that um, if we if we do an audit and you find out that one computer is used for 10 entries, then the that audit would be given to the electoral officer and then they would have to call and verify those were the people that in fact voted. Yes. Yeah, well, right now, like you're saying, you want, uh, and I gather that, I don't know why we have it, E-voting, electronic voting. Because we're all from here. We all live right here. And if you were, if you were letting people from Syracuse come, then I could see it being done. But until, until you can guarantee that nobody can vote two, three times, because people out there, they're not as honest as you are. And it's not fair to people that are taking their time to go and go to the polling station but it also, I think, the whole secondary schools. Um, mine when we were in college, we used it quite well, a bit. Well, then I can see that. they're away at college, right. so oh, they don't have to come back, right. you know, on a weekend to do a voting, so it gave them the opportunity to do that online. But you only going to have, what, maybe 100 or so? Depending on how many, yeah, how many are have a computer sitting in the living room and there could be a whole family sitting there. No 
those elder people that want their kids to vote a certain way, they're going to influence them to vote a certain way. It could be a gathering, it could be a big family. Well, we got Chancellor Eli, Eli, Eli voting, and it could be in there, and it could be telling them yes, who they did for. It's, it's not a going to vote here by yourself type thing like you have now. E voting, it could be like, oh, we keep a bunch of people in the background. You can't verify that. That's not going to happen. And another question I have is um, how can you tell the person decides? Well, um, council gets to decide at the end what the actual amendments will be. So it's up to you guys. It will be at the Just end. Just in that comment, though, we still have to be a registered voter. Right? Y yes. In order to be, as we said earlier, Correct. we want council to provide who can vote to Correct. the voting companies. So you still have to be registered voter. It doesn't mean all the 12,000, uh, 8,000 people over the age of 18 who are registered in these laws can vote. Oh. I forget it's how much a whole, it's, like. it's a whole different list so than your membership. You have to register to vote. You have to register to vote first. Mm -hmm. And if Leona was here, she would she would be able to tell me. Leona Bendick. <laughs> so if you're registered to vote, you went over, and, mm -hmm. and you registered to vote. However, your name was, if you did register to vote, would your name still be on? No. No. But I mean, after, if, if you did want to do the Still be able to do a ballot. Be, yeah. um, be able to do a ballot. Okay. A paper, a written. But in the end of all this, if there's a whole bunch of confusion and whatnot, then the chiefs are the ones that decide which way it's going to go. Yeah. So what if they go against what those people are so it, um, the way the election law, that's the, the way, way the way the election law is written, and and that was the process that we all do is that in the end, the recommendations are, ta are given to council, or they're actually the ones who are, who are putting the right of the recommendations together, and then um, they're the ones that have to sign an MCR approving the recommendations or telling us, the working task group, to make the, the edits, and, and then they're the ones who tell us to go to council. It's like that with every law. With every law, we can... Uh, it always has to go to council. <coughs> They're the ones that approve the draft to go out for a vote. Right. Uh, I just I just want to add on that um, if keeping in mind that there's been I think three attempts at this uh, to change the uh, to uh, amend the election law, and I think that uh, if we're not looking to go against or uh, uh, not listen to what somebody might want, but there's there's a number of things, and so I. I think what it's going to come down to is what is the priority because we need to have a success in this fourth attempt because if we uh, if, if something's too controversial I mean I think that we want to make uh, changes and if it's uh, the most priority change or the most uh, we, we want a success so if there's a change that didn't happen yet it's just because we didn't get to it yet and I think we're looking to find the priority right now I agree with you, but from my understanding, the reason why it didn't pass last time was because it wasn't changed to what the people wanted. And if you don't have it changed to the way the people want it, it's not going to pass again. Mm -hmm. It's not going to pass again, so don't think just because you're having this, it's going to fly. It's going to get flying. Because people are getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. Joyce. Pardon? Go ahead. You're right. I mean, for us, we know that some of these some of these things that have changed already that we've put in the um, draft may not be there when it comes out again. You know, if there's so much discussion and, the, and, and enough discussion that there's not clarity on what we should, if we should keep e-voting in, then maybe we don't put it in at all. You know, maybe there's too many steps that we haven't gone through enough that people are comfortable with that being in there. Um, maybe it's clear that we could go nine chiefs versus 12. Maybe that's clear and we'll keep that. 
maybe the age limit of the criteria for a, a candidate should be 25. If that's clear to us, then we'll do that. But if there's something that still has a lot of controversy between the community members and the process, we may not put it in. So that's why we want to hear what's being said and what your thoughts are. Like, and, and you provided very good feedback for possibilities of the whole law not being accepted because of one thing. Knowing that, do we leave it in? You know, that'll be council discussion and, and, and knowing that they're attending these meetings, they're hearing what you, the community has to say. Minimum age again, 18 was the highest. Here? Yes. Yes. Our people did, did, um, didn't have to vote. They didn't have to finish. Yeah, they didn't have to finish all the um, questions if they didn't finish it. Well, let me look to, let me, let me do this then. It could be. Um, that was this question. Yeah, because it has uh, additional options. You can vote more than once? Okay. Okay, yeah, they said there were multiple options. So it was, it was seven? 191, oh no. It's only because there was a combination of criteria for council. Yes, so you could, you could say, I want them to be 18, I want them to have a high school diploma. That's, that's why the number is a little high, because they wanted to not only have them 18, but they also wanted them to have a clear criminal reference check. And they wanted them to have college. That's question eight. That's question eight. Seven. Seven. Well, let's do them on the side. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I can't calculate on a Saturday. <laughs> I didn't tabulate this, just to let you know. I left it to the math experts. But we will look at it for the next session. <laughs> margin of error. <laughs> I have one, thank you. What? What did we say? Eighteen or twenty five. Okay, so high school diploma or a, a one-year college. At the last session, um, there was there was discussion that 18 um, and one-year college was not doable because you're just coming out of high school at 18, so which makes sense. It, it most likely is not doable, but high school diploma is. And right now, you don't have any educational requirement in your criteria for a council member. And MCA's um, what is our, um, standard high school for None. all of our job postings. Oh, job, job postings. For all of our job postings within MCA, the standard is high school diploma. So that's what's out there now is like, do you want them at age 20? Because then after I said, well, you could do 18 with a high school diploma, then some, some thought, okay, that's too young at 18. And so I said, okay, 25 with a high school diploma? Or 
twenty five with college you know so that's where those discussions went in the last session <coughs> number eight <laughs> So you're saying 25 in yeah. high school? Yeah. See, that's what we did with membership. Mm -hmm. Same thing with membership because you have to know. You have to know everything. Is it the history and why people need to in there to decide on membership. And at 18, life is just beginning for them. You might have five kids that would be one with each other. And that's the next, the next um, survey question. The survey question was, was in, um, we tried to follow the one that was done in 2012 by Nation Gun. Um, almost exactly the same question, so we could get a fair idea about what was the question before, has that opinion changed? So the next one we talked about, it says, in addition to the current candidate eligibility, should chiefs and the grand chief hold the following minimum requirements. 60 people said no requirements. 167 said that they want a, them to have a high school diploma. And 186 said post-secondary. 271 people wanted the council to have a clear criminal reference check. And then other was 97. Other, I, I don't remember what it, I, I wasn't the one that tabulated it, so I don't know. Okay. So why would you take the highest one and just use that? I think, um, it's a thought. It's, it's the council. I mean, you decide at the end. I know. Right now in the draft, you have all those. The only one you get put in is the whole apartment, right? Say that again, I'm sorry. We have one, two, three, four, five, and we don't know what. The other one. Yeah. So maybe there, in the other category, we had something that was um, repetitive. Yeah. Yeah, it was not, um, only because I don't know what, what the actual results were of the six, the 97 people who voted other, I, I, I'm just delivering the message. <laughs> she's saying so we put in here for criteria. It would be, it would be um, the chief electoral officer and the executive director. The chief electoral officer did the paper ballots and the, um, and the tabulation and the executive director who was Heather Phillips at the time did the electronic tabulation the survey when it came to <coughs> Tina. Joyce? 
Yes. So what we can do, that's an excellent, that's an excellent question. And for that other component, the online survey, we can extract that from the results and at the next meeting, we'll present what other is. I think we, the, um, the essence of that really is to provide community with another option to provide what that standard should be for their elected officials. So that's why that question is there. If there's something else that's not captured here, what do you think? So that's the reason that was there. But what we'll do is for the next meeting, just like we did with the margin of error, we'll present that information at the next session so you're aware. The criteria was um, looking at 2012 survey and trying to replicate the results, replicate the answers to see whether or not it was um, still a valid, still a valid question, and we compare. No, no, no. When we were formulating the questions, um, we did the best we can. We are the working task group. And um, you know now we're get your recommendation. It can change. I'm not afraid of change. We had them we had them both side by side, but at the end the working task group there was a varied opinion about what how how the question would be rolled out into the community. And that's why um, it the question varied from two thousand and twelve, but we still tried to keep the same substance. What was the most important thing that two thousand and twelve survey was saying? Do you, do you know the results of that? Maybe that's why, maybe it didn't um, come out. But why would we want to see different qualifications for the Grand Chief versus the Chiefs? It, that was a question that was asked in the 2012 survey. But we didn't ask that in the 2016 survey. I agree, but for me, and this is my personal opinion, I don't see why you would create such a division between the, the criteria or the eligibility of a grand chief versus a chief. Um, I mean, we create enough division amongst ourselves <laughs> without that. But yeah, because I, I would think, because they're all got to work together and got to serve the community, why would we put one to a higher caliber of criteria versus the others? <laughs> Just asking you back now. <laughs> Anyone else? So, I do have a question. Okay. So, with that all said in the discussion, what do we think should be in there? I know that it, there was also at the last meeting um, a thing about um, like a resume. Like, you put your resume out to the measure when you become a candidate that are you disclose that you have a criminal record. Um, record, or that you've been to college, or that you ha you haven't, or whatever, you know, was that that was something that was discussed at the last 
meeting too. If you can do a little longer so that's it. For some reason, it, it didn't change. I don't know. I don't. Well, Louise? No, I, I get his point. You know, we are kind of relying on putting something in that form from this past uh, referendum or public site and the other 12 public, uh, public site. But then you should be consistent. If you're going to use both of them, then you have to use both of them in its entirety. Like he's saying that the last time it was old, they wanted this. Now, which one is going to supersede the 12 or the 16? Actually, we tried to do exactly the same word as the 2012, but the working task group, there was a lot of argument over it, and the working task group at the end had to modify the questions that went out. Can I say something? Sure. The working task force isn't the community. Mm -hmm. And with him bringing up about uh, the, the chiefs, or what was that? Uh, they had to be in council one year, mm -hmm. at least one year. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I got lazy. I think I don't have the link information of all the stuff from way back. But that is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. And what I want it. our chief in the very call to be better, then they should run and know what the hell is going on. Is it? <laughs> they gotta have the experience. Mm -hmm. And they should have gone in there. Because I'm getting old. I can't remember. It, my job is I, 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 I just, this means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And I've got a lot to say yet. We but, can. Uh, you know, that's, that's really good. To we can add it. Now is the time because yes. we're not going to change that for another hundred years. Yeah, and now is the time you know to. I mean? And that's why people don't go because it's not put in there. It I can be. There's nobody here to say so. <laughs> you just said it. So. Well, it's because I'm being reminded. But that's what the meetings are about. It's not a finished document, so we well, can consider it. It's time for maybe you can still be in there, right? Mm -hmm. Nine, if a Mohawk Council of Akwazasne employees elected to serve on council for MCA, should they be allowed to have their staff position held for them while serving office? And, and, and I'll say, if you look at the 172 people who said yes, it'll say yes, but, but they must resign only if they're re-elected to a second term. That was, that was the survey that um, I know this looks funny. It says yes if re if reelected to a second term, but it really is. I'll show you the um, real one. It said, if a council of Akuzasni employees elected to serve on council for MCA, should they be allowed to have their staff position held for them while serving office? And it's this one that the 172, but the re original answer or the original um, statement was yes, but the employee must resign their position if re-elected for a second consecutive term as an as MCA chief. So their position will be held for them for one term, but if they're, if they're elected to a second term, they'll have to resign their position.
That was just to provide. Well, it, that, it was. So it was just trying to, with the space we had, it was just trying to hurry up and do it by point form. So that's why I have the original survey with us, so we can look at the original results. In the draft? Yes. Yes. I'll go that over that next. I'll go over the change of the change clause. Okay. And the last one for the survey. Where'd it go? It said, what is the maximum number of terms a person can be elected as chief? We had none one term or two terms, and the highest number was 189. Last question. Yes. Uh, you said at the beginning your We looked at the highest number because we heard from the community that said, you know, we did a survey, are you going to listen to the survey? So we took what the survey results are and put that into the, into the um, draft. And once the draft is, is now available to you, now we want your opinion. Now we want your recommendation to council. Council is here and, and you tell them what you want. And that's why that's why these meetings are here. Those this is just a drop. It can change. These these numbers that are up there for zero term, one, two terms, were those the options given to the people or did they give the numbers to you? That's those were their options. Those were I think that was from the two thousand twelve and Philip here would, would let you know. No, no, your position won't be held for you. You you can go as long as you want. It's just that if you if you are an MCA employee. No, 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 no. no. I know that. Okay. This question here doesn't say consecutive. No, it doesn't say consecutive. It says no term limit. They are allowed to hold office as, as for as many terms as they are elected. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that, the, that has That's the, the highest popular. number. That was the popular. And remember, we're not saying anything. <coughs> All we're putting up are the numbers and what came from the people. And it was brought to us that said at public meetings, what are you doing with them? Are you putting everything in there that was the highest um, voting on it and we said yes because people were challenging whether the integrity of the working task group was going to put in the actual findings. These are the actual findings. So we're sitting here today asking you what do you think of them and what do you want to do? Do you want to keep it as you can, no, none, you know, no terms you can keep running as many as you want? Do you want it two terms? You know, we're putting the information here. Right. So nobody should have that kind of... But 
it was a question in the survey. The survey went out long time ago. We had the meetings for these at the working task group. Discussion should, could have been done there too, which we did of those present. But now we're saying, these are the findings. The survey's done. It's in front of the community now to say, do you agree do you, or do you not agree? Or do you have a different recommendation that council can consider? You know? That's a that's a mark. Like, yeah. The pack is doing a good job of what you like. Yeah. The pack is a criminal record. People are either elected or not elected, right? Yeah. If the age thing too, right? So I mean that goes back to my comment from earlier is that it's vested in the people mm -hmm. whether or not mm -hmm. they have the faith in that individual to lead the community, right? So if they're 18, 25, 75, right? college, high school, PhD, life right? experience. Somebody who has a you know a minor offense under record, maybe something minimal, it's up to the individual as it exists now uh, to put, have that faith in mm -hmm. forward that person, right? So we have to balance of where those restrictions are, right? Because we have to have some faith in the people where we go. Huh? I agree. Did you have one?
Oh, this is the time to I'm say sorry. those things. Louis? Oh, To the one that's being drafted right now, is that what you're saying? Or the 2000 class? Mm -hmm. The one that's drafted now. Okay. Well, take it to council. We're just here to facilitate the meeting and council decides in the end. Anything else? So I just want to go to the where the changes, what we did after we did the survey. And I'm just going to go to a summary, if I can find out which one it was. Summary, okay, this one. Uh, and that's the hot, that's, so what we have is a three columns. Three columns is what the old election law said. The middle column is the proposed election law and the and the reason on the third column is because of that the question on the survey so with with the discussion today this can be this is what we proposed so the old the old ele the el current election law says under 3.2 the Mohawk Council of Akwazasne shall be comprised of one grand chief and 12 district chiefs consisting of four district chiefs. We proposed, remember it's only proposal, that the Mohawk Council of Akwazasne shall be comprised of one grand chief and nine district chiefs. I don't know why that, that's happening. Okay, one grand chief and nine district chiefs consisting of three district chiefs from each district. And that's a result of the community survey in 2016, which indicated a preferred composition of district chiefs to be nine.
Um, you were on the working task group. What do you think? Yeah, you are. I introduced, I introduced the working task group here. Yes. I think those recommendations. But again, today, you're bringing up the fact of why you're using all these um, suggested mm -hmm. draft mm -hmm. material. And you're bringing up 12. Yes. When I was sitting on the table, on the drafting table, 12 was never brought up. We were only reflecting on the 16. And on the, on the we have 12 here. Okay, I think that the, the community, because this is being recorded, the community is going to get really mixed up because when I, when I hear you say 12, I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about 12 district chiefs versus, you know, um, the so, yeah, weeks. if you can say the 2012 survey, that way the community will know what you're referring to, if, if you don't mind. Thank you. Just, okay. Hmm? We did consider it Yes. That's what she's saying is we considered it. We didn't know. Yeah. The question in 2012, I am satisfied with the existing system of 12 district chief and one grand chief. Okay. And what number? 56%. Joyce, how did you choose that question? We, we chose our questions as looking at the 2012 survey, and then we gave options. And I don't think you have the full, the full survey there. We went to what the, um, it, it did have a list of, do you prefer 12 district chiefs? Um, we did go back to that, and, and I don't remember that. I mean, I don't remember exactly how it formulated, but I know that we had a discussion at the table, and we did have 2012 there, and we did, and we did use that as a guide to do the 2016. It did come out the same, because the people on the working task group really didn't like, um, I, I think, um, for example, there was, there was a question in 2012 that um, we wanted to put in the survey. And I remember one of the working task group members says, you can't ask that question. And I said, why not? It's the same question in 2012. And they said, well, if you want to ask that question in 2012, you have to go after those 800 people that answered that survey and ask that question again. And I said, so what's the solution? So the solution was we put out this survey with the, with the 10 questions so that we could ask an opinion of the community. And, and that's the result of what you see here. I think, that's a, that, I think that's a real good process, and, and that really should have happened. Um, but this delayed us by three months. And in order for us to change within this term, um, that three months was pretty, um, it, was, it was talking about the survey and what questions should do, and then we had to deliver the survey. If we wanted to start writing the election law draft, in time for the general election in 2018, guess what? We were running out of time. And in order for us to look at all those section changes, um, we were running out of time. So if um, you wanted that, you as, as one person, um, and wanted us to get that into the survey, then you should have, um, I think it would have been great if um, we had some sort of process right. But we didn't have a process. We didn't have a process, we didn't have um, what are, what, how many people we wanted. We know we wanted 350 people to answer the survey. Um, we didn't say whether or not we would take a percentage or, or we just, but what we decided at the end was just say, what's the majority? 
what was the most popular vote. And that's how we and that's how we put the survey together. Again, we just needed a guide so that we could draft it, so that community could come here and we see one, two, three, four, five people here at the community consultation meeting. Five people compared to 350 that we're trying to get through the survey. So we tried our best. And um, maybe if, if, um, if you want to recommend, we close it up and say, we'll do it after 2018 because there's not enough time. But we do want your opinion to try to get this out before the 2018 general election happens. In order to do that, we have to be able, you have to, the community has to, give their recommendations to council in time so that the working task group can redraft this proposed draft and that you can have a vote on it. So we need you to give council your recommendations and if we don't, if we don't meet the general election for 2018, then we just go by the 2005 election law. Um, is, is, is it okay if I answer? Okay. Our deadline is to try to get a vote in it by September. Because if we can't get a vote, um, based on the new, the work plan, and I brought that, September. No, based on the new work plan, um, the e executive director, you know, if through the proposed draft, the executive director has to start advertising for a CEO and a DEO in November to try to get everyone lined up in December. And I'm going to show you that. I'm pretty sure I loaded it. Here we go. So this is it. By November 20th, if we have an election law in place, the, the ED is going to have to do the first call out to Indian Times for the November 23rd publication. Because there's 14 days to post for the deadline to come in. If there's not enough applicants, then that week has to be a selection of CEOs, DEOs, and, and I know it says EEAC, but we're not using the commission, the board anymore. If this, if this, if by the way everything happens, the schedule, then the new proposed draft law will follow this kind of schedule. Yes. And if, if it doesn't pass, if it doesn't pass, there were even flaws in, in the past because it says that the chief electoral officer and the deputy electoral officers and the Akwazasi Election Appeal Board has to be ready by six months before the general election. Six months before the general election, say if it's June 30th, six months before, will have to be, everyone has to be in place by December 30th. What happened in the past was um, they didn't advertise in time and the CEO and DEO missed that deadline. Well, we're trying to, we're trying to make sure that this schedule is right. So that's why we're looking at November 20th as the first call out so that that's a Monday. It goes to Indian time by the 23rd and then we start the process. Because if there's not enough people, if there's not enough people to um, put the position of DEO or CEO, a second call out has to be made or else they have to select. So it gives them a week to try to select. And don't forget, there has to be two weeks of advertising in Indian Time newspaper. So we looked at all that. And so November 20th is kind of our magic deadline.
So um, I just want to show you that it was council that put the working task group together. Yeah, I understand. I was saying it's there. Yeah. I agree with it, but I don't agree with the fast track in the process. Oh, that's the old one. So it's this isn't my mandate. This is council that tells us what to do. So we are putting it together and trying to, and I don't have that MCR here. Yeah, I understand. Okay. I understand the MCR goes up. Okay. Just to answer that, the prompt is, is the um, section 18 that allows for amendment. It's very, very narrow. So the working task group did the best they can with, um, with you know, the district chiefs being elected or the district chiefs being part of the working task group. So we all know that we're trying to meet the 2018 deadline because that is the mandate from the MCR. Anything else? Pat? Yeah. Are we going through this whole book? No. No? No, but you can, you can, mm -hmm. if, if you want to send those, rec and say about, talk about those recommendations, now's your time. Now's the time to, to talk about it. I don't know. Let's see. Yes. I'm trying to find her um, the answer. PQ quorum. It says means the minimum number of members who must be present to transact it legally. Let me see if I can read it really fast. No, I don't know. Was quorum established in the old election law, do you know? I don't know. I don't know why the word is in the election law. Yeah, it's not yeah. in here. That's what I was thinking. It doesn't have a place in here. Um, it would be, see if you, if the, if the makeup of council turns to, changes to nine, then there's a lot of documents that will have to be um, amended itself. Yeah, I do have a few questions, but I don't know when you're going to start. Oh, no, stop. No? No. All right, on section 10? Yep. You're appointed observers? Yes. in the old election law that they so that they can go and campaign in their district. Okay, the 
section 21. Okay. More teeth to this law when, when teeth get uh, on the line? That is, that is up to the ethical conduct law. Mm -hmm. Not this law. No. Once they're elected, then the ethical conduct law takes, takes over. Well, don't you think that should be brought at the same time so we know what... what I tried to put it in here, just to let you know, and the, and the working task group says no, it didn't belong in here. You're never going to get the people back to find out what, what can be done and what not. If something goes wrong and you feel that it's being done, you don't know what to do. Because we don't have the ethical conduct. Do you send it to every household? No. It's, a, it's in the website, just to let you know. Every, everything's posted. If you want a copy of all the laws, we can uh, give you a copy. You see, now there's my questions. Mm -hmm. We'll vote now. I will vote no because I don't know what's going on. Okay. I want more tea. We had one counselor here on, on the island that went to school while she was standing, sitting as a chief. What's happening to that? Nothing. No, there that is. Was, that was taken away from the community. You know, and I think that there, there's, there's, there's nothing in here for maybe $1,000. What the is that? You know what I mean? I it's like, uh, she may not well. Yeah. Going to school, probably got her school to pay for, plus sitting as a chief. And now, she's prolonging the court hearing. It's been what? Three, six years? Almost six years? Or no, no, no. Years? It, was, it happened Three at years. the end of her time. Almost at the end of her. It has. Um, she's been brought to the Upper Destiny Court, but the, she challenged it in federal you court. Call. You'll never get your answer. You'll never get nothing done. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing in here to go at. And when a chief does something wrong, there's nothing to take care of that either. And I, for one, want something done, and I know the community do too. They're not here, but I'm bringing it up. Something has to be done to, to keep people in line. Okay. Do you propose that the ethical conduct law be part of the election law? I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know. Okay. All I know is I want uh, something to be put in the law. If it has to be in this law or the ethical law, uh, we have that. But what was it? Mm -hmm. There's nothing in that either. It doesn't give the lawyers anything to do with them. So they get away with it. Well, and I'm tired of to hear stuff like that. It's not fair to the community. The community won't, doesn't even care anymore. They don't come out. It, it tells you that right now. Because the, everybody's doing it. They all, they're damn pleased whether they hurt somebody or not. You know, I, I hate to be like this, but I tell you, I better not cut this out of the putting it on TV. I don't care about it on TV. People got to know. They have avenues, and every time I've gone to have something fixed, the system made it so hard for you to get your, your thing settled that you give up. And that's from my being involved in politics. You know, but it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. So this better be done quickly because I don't know. Okay. Any other recommendations? Okay, just want you know, I'm, I'm, I'm angry at her, mm -hmm. so I can't tell you what, what else. But maybe if you settle down the next time we smile. You know what? Um, you can always write it down, and when the next community consultation meeting is, then bring that to council, and I can read it. I'm sure I will. I can read it off for you. Okay. I will do that. Donna. So it looks like the events and the penalties are in regard to the, the election of selecting a leader. Correct. Again, 
is the recommendation that it be part of the election law? Okay. I'll leave it up to any other questions regarding regarding this. Okay, then what I want to do is go to go back to that three point three sections. So these this is a summary of the major the major changes we made. It under the Current election law under 3.3, it says the position of grand chief and district chief shall be determined at a general election. In, in um, 4.5, we said that the positions, sorry, shall be ter determined at the general election by secret ballot or secure online voting. And that was in regard, that was in regard to question six, where the community survey indicates secure on, online, not on link, voting be used as an option for elections. No, no, and it might mean that they can have two votes, so that's why you need to be more specific. Okay. Because right now the way it says there's an option, either you're going to go by secret ballot or you're going to use the secret ballot method or the electronic vote. Yes. But you're not, you're, you're using both. Mm -hmm. No, they, people have a choice of either doing yeah. secret ballot or online. It, it would be good if, um, you know, if you, when you're on a working task group to make those changes and, and whatever the recommendation is, um, maybe you want to say it now and we can change it. Joyce, I got, how about we just put, a how about we say buy either secret ballot yeah, or, either, or yeah. secure online voting? Mm -hmm. Say, what was it? So the position of Grand Chief and District Chief shall be determined at the general election either by secret ballot or secure online voting. So that way you have the option. Okay. One or the other. Okay. 
under 3-6. It says the four candidates receiving the highest number of votes in a district for the position of district chief shall be declared elected. So looking at question four of the survey, we change it to the candidates for the positions of nine district chiefs receiving the highest number of votes from all three districts shall be declared elected. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, was that the Justice Department? Did they, uh, was that? Oh, oh, for the community survey. I mean, for the recommendations, the community consultation meeting. It was in St. Regis, yeah. At the, at the school. Two. There were, there were, there were three, <laughs> there were three community members, and then and Philip showed as a staff person. So four. Three total. Four, three. and then, and then one left. I was just, you know, three total. We still have one more meeting. You, yeah. We still have to go to just nine. Okay. Okay. In question, eligibility of candidates. Any candidate for the position of Grand Chief must. Did, was there another question? No. Okay. Must have attained the age of 18 years. So we left that in there because there was no change. No change. And under B, have resided in the territory of Akwazesti for one year immediately proceed. And, and sorry, my back is to you, so just get my attention if you have to. Um, ha have resided in the territory for one year immediately preceding the date of the general election. We changed the wording just so that it'd be a little bit better. And we said resides and continues to reside in the territory of Akwazesti for one year immediately preceding the date of the general election or by-election. Okay? All right. And that means they can't move? Correct. That's, that's why we put that in there. Um, C, be a registered member of the Mohawks of Akwazesti. And we change that to say be an eligible voter because they can be a... Um, a member of Akwazesti, that doesn't mean they're an eligible voter. Donna? So it says the territory. So if a person resides in the island and they decide within that year, they can be nominated or Snod? They have to be one year preceding. So they had to have lived in, in Snod a year before. In that district for a year. Yes. Not the territory. That's right. So um, we will change that. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that uh, C, that, that C works for the eligible voters. I mean, I don't think it that's very works. restrictive. Yeah. 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 As a, to become a chief? Yeah. Yeah. They should well, be an eligible they, voter? Because again, there's 8,000 people on the registry list. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the membership is, but there's a lot of people that are members Look at that, if, if you don't mind. Um, let me see what the call oh, winner so nomination is. Why should the nominate Joyce King to be a district chief and she's not a voter because she just chose to never register to be a voter? Then she's not being nominated by me, and there's so, not another date to go and nominate her again except in three years. So when you nominate, how far is nomination from election? That's what I'm looking at. That was part of our discussion. Okay. 30 days. They have 30 days to post the voters list before nominations happen. Mm -hmm. You have to be a voter to be uh, So 
what then you're saying. Good, I will never be a registered voter. So it, well, the reality is, if you're if you're not if you're a member and you're nominated, that gives you should be giving you the right to be nominated. But say for me, like say if I was nominated and I still hadn't become a, a registered voter, I can be nominated and my name could still go in there. Wait, wait, wait. But I can't vote because I didn't register in time. But my name could still be in there if this had gone back to the way it was before. The way it was the way it was before was member. You had to be a member. So that way before I could I could be nominated, but because I'm not on the voters list, I can't vote. But I can be nominated. People can vote for me. When you change it to this, I can't be nominated. Right. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, I agree with you. Just trying to clear it up. should be a, a registered member. Yeah, we can go back to that. You can go back to that. Before I turn my back on the Is it C? Yes. What happens if there's two individuals that ain't eligible to vote and are not on the voters list and they nominate a person? Well, that's what she That's saying. what the discussion just was about. So what you're asking is that if we change it to being on the voters list, then they won't be eligible. But what Grand Chief is saying that they should just have to be a member of Wakazasne. They should have to be on the voters list. It's just that they won't be able to vote in the election they're in. But they'll be able to be a nominee <laughs> or a candidate because they're a member. They get on the voters list, yeah. No, but um, just to let you know, we um, you brought that up before, and we um, said we made sure that the voters list have all those people who will be 18 at the time of the election, so they would be included on. Um, D, be an ungwehunwe, there's no change. E, be nominated for that position by at least two persons eligible to vote for that person. And all we said was we cleaned up the language and it says be nominated for that p position by at least two eligible voters. F, not be a CEO, there was no change in that. And then, and then there was nothing. So what we did was um, when we had the survey, we added those things into the survey. Question eight out of the survey, we put in G, not have been convicted of an indictable offense in Canada, a felony in the United States, through the presentation of a, cure cl of a current clear criminal reference check, also known as a CPIC, except for those indictable offenses and felonies pertaining to the preservation of community or native rights, providing the action is sanctioned by the council. Is there an end? So it's for E? Yeah. Be nominated for that position by at least two eligible voters from the district. Okay. Because you're not eligible if you win eligible voters at large. Okay. Okay. Actually, I think it's in the nomination process. Um, let me get to it. I think the nomination is where it has to be by district. Um, it would, it should have been in here. Finish. That's what it's meant to point out. Because it says to be nominated. Yes. And you're saying that it should be nominated by two other from that district. 
and it's and it's covered from nominations in section nine. It says that um, that at the time of nomination. Nominated or seconded? Nope, it's not in here. That's my case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in that general provisions. That's where it was. Okay, so G is to talk about the criminal reference check, and H is to have that one-year post-secondary education or eight credits, which would be equal to a year college. And that was from the survey. The other thing under the current law, under 8.5, any candidate who is elected and who is deemed a full-time permanent employee of the Mohawk Council of Akwesasne shall be granted a leave of absence from his or her employment. And under question 9, to reflect that, we said any candidate who is elected and who is deemed a full-time permanent employee of the Mohawk Council of Akwesasne shall be granted a leave of absence from their employment for one term, providing the term is not consecutive. And that is a result of the community survey. The other thing was the appeals process. In the appeals process, we have the, currently have the Akwesasne Election Appeal Board who looks at all appeals, but now we're sending everything to the Akwesasne Court in order to address any appeals. There is a process in place. They're the ones who put the, um, who will send a notice, there'll be a hearing, all that good stuff. Joyce? Yes? The, it will be the court administrator who will do, and the court clerk who will do that entire process. Making sure there's a notice to the community, notice to the people who are affected by the appeal, um, they'll do a notice to the chief whose position is um, affected by the appeal and, and to the applicant. And it'll be in an affidavit, it'll, no, it'll be sent, it'll be delivered by people who are process servers and then they will give an affidavit that those people were served. And then the hearing date will be will be put to, um, they have a certain timeline where they can, they have to decide, I think, within 30 days or something like that. My remembering that the appeals were put in at that time, I think they were very truthful. And who's going to make sure that you were truthful? Like the person who were testifying? You didn't like the person, so you guys, and I didn't like There, there is a, there is a, um, there is a commission that oversees the justice, and you could put a complaint in there. If they, if they, if they, um, if, yes, if there's an unethical um, decision made, 
then you can go to them and your decision, I mean, they'll start the process on the complaint. Okay. As long as you have something on there. Actually, it came from a chief who said that, um, you know, you already have an appeal. You already, you know, with the way the old one was, it goes to the Alcazar Election Appeal Board, and then it can be appealed to the court. But you only need one set of appeal to the decision of the general election. So that's why it would it'd be cheaper, and uh, that's our recommendation from the working task group to not have the Akwazeski Election Appeal Board anymore and just send it to the court so that we don't have to pay on the rarium, we don't have to train the election the appeal board every every um, three years and that um, the the decisions are recorded and part of the court record now. And the reason why the, um, I, can, I can tell you the reason behind that, it's because they didn't want a justice of the peace on the election appeal board because it can be appealed to the court. And you didn't want the same person looking at your, you know, having a lower decision and then having to look at the appeal. And that's the reason why I, you know, the way I looked at it is that they didn't want them to be on the election appeal board. But now's the time to make those recommendations. No, um, they're supposed to be in the appellate division. See, we didn't have a court law before. We didn't have a court. Once in the old, in the current election law, it went to the Akwazasi Election Appeal Board, and that decision could be appealed to the court, and then it stopped. But if, um, if here, if we send it over to the court, um, that's supposed to be your appeal because your, your, um, if I could. If I could quote you, Louise, it was, you have one appeal, and that appeal should, you're appealing the decision of the chief electoral officer. So just one appeal, that's it? Yes. Because in, you remember how long it took us last time 
I remember um, the Gawinoge Council didn't um, get elected until February, where elections happened in June. And so we're trying to bring that back down in a smaller time frame so that people can get representation of their council. So we, we consider that. Amendment process. The amendment said, and, and, and this is where, you know, it says that it has to go to council. It has to go, and it's, this isn't the whole thing. But, the, but when you want to do amendments out of this election law, and this isn't, isn't the whole section, but it has to follow its own process. And we said, why should it, you know, let's line it up with the rest of the Akwazasmi laws where it follows the Akwazasmi legislative enactment process. So everything's lined up now. So uh, instead of the election law having its own amendment process, it'll just follow the way it is that every other law has to be amended. So it's the uh, same thing, community consultation meetings, it has to be accepted in principle, the draft has to go out. And, and you're seeing parts of that right now because everyone got a copy in their mailbox of the election law and community notice. So that's um, what we asked you know, to, to just make sure that if this law is passed, any amendments will follow the same procedure as all other Akwazasne laws. Yes. And you, and you brought up the um, electoral officer? Is that what you're talking about? I'll just say, as an example, it's an uh -huh. administrative aspect of this mm -hmm. particular piece of legislation that could be, you know, that in the future there could be a small change mm -hmm. rather than going through this entire process where things keep not being accepted by the community, that it could be a simpler amendment process to just accept a small administrative change, not changing the general provisions which are basically. So, so with that, we actually wanted to try to get rid of or stop all the procedures that were in here and make it into a law, but we didn't want to do a lot of changes because we didn't want this voted down. And with the selection of the electoral officers and the, um, the chief electoral officer, the deputy, and the uniform security personnel, we put that as an attachment, a schedule. So that in the amendments, you're going to see that all schedules can be changed according to an MCR. So that's a faster process. So we did that. We tried to take the procedures out, put as much as we can without changing the real substance of the election law because we didn't want it to be voted down.
So what we did was put it into a schedule, and those schedules can be can be um, changed by an MCI. Done. Because it is the it is the responsibility of the executive officer to appoint the chief electoral officer. So we don't want that in the law so that they could change the terms of reference. That's what it's good. Anything else? So I guess Phil, you want to do a presentation? No, it's a new addition. Okay. New addition to what was previously said. <laughs> Whenever it can load. Uh, yes. Uh, no, it's just a PDF, but I'm just having difficulty opening it. Sorry if it's a little bit smaller font for people in the back. Um, can you zoom in on it? I can. There you go. Okay. So basically, I I like called you know we had a 2012 survey and then the latest 2016 survey kind of gave areas that should be done and I just feel like because we hit some areas that are controversial or pretty much tied as to decision, that there should be another comprehensive survey again, similar to the 2012 outreach findings, where if you were to do a voter respondent, that certain things be taken into consideration, such as if there is an online process that you do ask for the band number, but just the first four numbers, which would then if you're not Aquas of Snolo, it's pretty much not known. It's one, it's going to be uh, 1519 for the 519. So there's that aspect without a person divulging their entire band number. Uh, I also propose that uh, there be a question about membership status, member, probationary member, eligible non-member, so a person that who is eligible but hasn't gone through the process yet, and then an ineligible non-member, so basically a person that really shouldn't be answering this survey, but hey, they can indicate that. Uh, primary residents, Akwazasne and Northern Districts, Akwazasne Southern Districts, City of Cornwall, Town of Messina, Town of Fort Covington, U.S. outside of the above-mentioned locations, Canada outside of the above-mentioned locations. This gives you a better cross-section of Akwazasnolo that are either within the districts or within the surrounding area. Because if you're a younger generation, you are not living on a on reserve. <laughs> it's very, very hard. Uh, eligibility of voter, asking whether or not they are, they are a voter, and it's yes, no, or not sure. Uh, sex, female, male, X, uh, non-male or female binary. This is a new uh, option that's being given to all questions of sex, and then undisclosed. 
age groups are pretty straightforward. Employment, pretty much straightforward, full, part, seasonal, unemployed. And then if they are employed, to ask that question, is it on or off Akwazasne? Is it, if they are employed in Akwazasne, are they government or non-government? Because you kind of want to try to get a cross-section of the community because if the survey notice goes out, it's primarily MCA employees that do it, but we want all members. We kind of want to make sure that target audience is that. And then Akwazasne leadership ideals. So basically a summary of Akwazasne's past aspects of the Indian Act where band councils have full authority to make all decisions that is from the Indian Act processes, especially when it comes to bylaws and what kind of democracy should the elected leadership follow. Is it the idea that members should vote on all laws, bylaws, regulations, or is it should be a hybrid where there are some laws that are done by membership. So this is the direction that is more inducive for the governance code, but is still something that could be captured in an Akwazasne election law, or is it strictly re uh, representational democracy where council has, you vote council in, council makes the decision on the laws. In Akwazasne, we say no because we want membership in certain things to be brought to community referendum. So that's really a referendum question, and it was a question that was brought up in the 2012 findings. Pieces of legislation and who has the authority to pass it. So that was, again, from the 2012, this idea of laws, um, laws being that they are legislation that affect all members and residents of Akwazasne. Should they be brought up in a membership referendum regardless of residency? Should it only be Akwazasne residents referendum? Or should it be only Akwazasne Northern District residents who get to vote in a referendum? Or is it strictly a Mohawk Council resolution that would authorize such an action? And then same thing for bylaws, bylaws that would only affect residents within Akwazasne's Northern District, so such as control of um, local traffic and wastewater infrastructure, examples. And then finally, regulations, legislation that gives clarity to direction to carry out a law or bylaw. So such as the voting, in theory, a voting regulation could be a smaller piece of legislation that doesn't necessarily need the entire membership to pass, nor does it really need uh, such a high level of community input. And then also policy, should that just, should there be some policies that are brought to community or should it simply be uh, authority granted to council? Uh, 10, role of Mohawk Nation Council of Chiefs, basically does the community see them as overseers, advising role, informed role, or is there no role? So is what relationship should MCA have with uh, Mohawk Nation? Same thing with the tribe, is it a complementary role where the two try to strive to equalize programs and policies for the community? Or is it just informing them on a regular basis or is there no commitment to the tribe itself? Well, <coughs> Kind of. There, there's options because in the 2012 findings, there was an option and there was an input that said traditional council should have a role or a position in dealing with uh, NCA passing laws. So here's a potential option to say whether there's no commitment or is there some form of commitment with Mohawk Nation. And that's a partnership that could be worked out. Well, I just, yeah, I don't, when you bring that up, I just think that. Yeah, that's, that, that would be more of an informed. No, and that's that's something where in Akwazasne, we divided ourselves to the point where we said, you're on that side, stick with that side. Now we're all talking and we're all working together as seeing Akwazasne as, as a single community. And I think if, com if the community members give in a survey some direction as to what they would like to see evolve, then that should be taken into consideration. Thank you. Uh, general provisions of council. So this is where we get into the nitty gritty aspects of council length. Is there a possibility of staggered terms similar to the tribe? Whether or not those questions, uh, those, those are questions that could be asked in a survey. District representation is an equal number or is it should be based off of population? Or should there be no district representation and just be 
Uh, anybody at large? A number of representatives. Should it be a total of six, nine, or twelve, or other? So, revisiting that question. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to bring up the couple of points there. Like for the for the nine, like I mean, it does make sense for uh, I guess less of a budget. Mm -hmm. But I think that like with the four, like forum in mind and uh, less chiefs uh, that's more traveling per, per chiefs, and, uh, you know, what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, that's that's where like full discussion on that question should yeah. be done. Question about the title. Should it be district chiefs? Could it be district representative, counselor, or other? Just because when we're saying chief, that is a holdover from the Indian Act, and it is a bit of a loaded term when people use it. They expect the chief to be the one in charge. Uh, district representation. Uh, should it be just Goanoga, Ganadago, and Jutsnaine, or should there also be southern district representation? Or is there membership at large? representation or is there another user input so this idea of how are non-resident members having their voice heard at a council table because right now the system does make a two-tiered membership members who live on district who get fully involved with everything and then members who don't reside in district and they have very limited channels to employ uh, That, that's uh, further on for the grand chief position. I do ask that question. And then district representatives, candidate age requirements, uh, requirements for residing. Could a district representative kind of reside in Akwazasne if a situation arose? Or do they have to be within that district? Uh, minimal education requirements. So again, asking high school, uh, post-secondary experience, or is there a post-secondary diploma? or certificate. Uh, criminal check requirements. Is there a disclosure to public? Is there a clear reference except for charges that benefit the community so as it is now? Or is it a 100% clear criminal reference check? Uh, language requirements. Is there a proficiency or is there just a commitment to learn or no requirements? And then the terms. Should be they be one consecutive term no more than one consecutive term, no more than one term ever, or is it two, three, or other user? In the 2012 survey, they do go up to five terms, so we kind of don't want that many options. And then position for Grand Chief, um, because as soon as we changed from the Indian Act to our current election law, we did recognize the Grand Chief position as being a new added position, so is is it to be maintained or is it to be removed and go back to just repre uh, representation of the districts and having equal voice? Uh, the role of Grand Chief, uh, some believe that Grand, Grand Chief position should direct counsel. Some believe that he should just have an equal voice to interject as necessary or does he, is he just a speaker of counsel? So counsel makes the direction he just announces it to the community and to the outside. So what does the community have expectations for the Grand Chief position? Uh, the voting base, should it only be Northern District residents? So the current system, you've got to be in within the Northern District to vote. Or it could be only Akwazasne residents, Northern and Southern Districts, because as soon as we recognize the border by saying, oh, you've got to be north of the line to vote, we're again imposing the border on our own membership in our own community. Or are we saying all members 18 of age may vote for the Grand Chief? Is that, is that, would that then make the Grand Chief the de facto voice for those who do not reside within uh, the Northern Districts? Or is there other? Uh, candidate age, uh, residence, education, uh, minimal education. Oh, that might be doubled, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Grand Chief uh, criminal check requirements, same thing. 
and it is asking the question, is the Grand Chief set to a higher standard, different standard? And I know you kind of said they, they shouldn't, but from the 2012 and the expectations of a Grand Chief, what is his role to the greater scheme of the membership? So that could be, could it be the Grand Chief, the only one that has certain expectations where the other district chiefs represent uh, representatives do not aspects like that uh, language requirements term limits should the grand chief position be the only one that has term limits that is a possibility uh, then council provisions uh, their employment with MCA they must resign before serving office they can serve, have their position reserved for one term and then resign for another term two terms or is that all all put their position should be reserved indefinitely. Uh, payment is a bi-weekly salary, regardless of hours worked. Is it hourly wage with a nine to five schedule? Is it a lump sum installments over time? Uh, or is there other? Uh, council benefits, should they have full employee benefits? So the retirement time off, 40 hour work week, overtime, or is it should be limited or is there should be no? Uh, it was similar question was asked in 2012. Eligibility of voters, should the district representative voting base be based off of they reside within their district or is it voting at large idea? Uh, age, They're, in some countries they do allow voting at 16. They do want the younger generation to start having an input in the decision making process and that is one possibility of getting that high school age demographic to really take into consideration, oh, I, I actually have a vote at a local level. They have a voice. Uh, 16, 18, uh, 21, uh, I was supposed to put in 25 as well. Uh, residents, well, where does the voter eligibility must reside in Aquazas in northern and southern districts? may reside in Canada or Akwesasne, which is reflecting the tribe where you may reside in the U.S. or in the tribe, but as if you reside in the northern district of uh, Akwesasne, you cannot vote in the tribal election. Do we want to mirror that, or is there, may reside in U.S., Canada, or Akwesasne, so that's all members, members, regardless of where they reside, may vote. Uh, membership, only full members may vote, full members and probationary members may vote, or other, because uh, what we're having a lot now is those who are attempting to go to school at around 18, realizing that they're not full members, and so they go into probationary period, and whether or not their voice should count in the process as well. Also, the revisit of the term Ogwehuwe. Uh, right now, it's listed as a person who's biologically male or female, or are of native ancestry. So that is doing exactly what the tribe says as requiring blood quantum, or is it Ogwenhoe meaning an indigenous person, or should a term be removed as it's already an aspect of membership? Because in membership it is, there is a requirement of uh, what uh, connection you have with the community. Electronic voting, yes with full use. Yes, with limited use. So I think that might take into consideration some of the comments that are raised where only in certain instances should electronic voting be used or no. Appeals process, is it to utilize the community member based off of the appeal board as written in the current law, utilize Aquasas and Mohawk Court or other, and the amendment process, oh, I think that might have actually been lost where it was going to ask that question of, does it accept an amendment process as it is written, or by uh, the law enactment process, or some hybrid of some aspects are visited and other aspects are not. Uh, acceptance of survey. So basically the idea of trying to target maybe a third of the membership, Attention paid to get equal representation from all members, an option to use in-person door-to-door canvassing because community members love to say, you didn't visit me at my kitchen table, how am I supposed to know? Maybe that's mandated for the survey. Uh, is there a secure online survey process, option to have prolonged window survey to ensure that the sampling is large enough? So not just limiting yourself, but making sure that there is process to engage a large percentage of the membership. 
survey results should be compiled and officially distributed to all membership. All user input answers should be listed and publicly available. In the 2012, they did list other, and they did say option one, option two, option three, that was user input. Uh, graphs and uh, simple analysis of the data set should be made publicly available, uh, preferably mailed outside of the districts. <laughs> but within Akwazasne? And then survey acceptance, the idea that the survey is done with large enough sampling, the survey is conducted in a fair and independent manner, consistent with integrity and transparency, with acceptable and accountable margin of error, with full uh, attempt to have community dialogue and discussion with data sets. So there is a community consultation process before the survey is actually accepted. So there's a discussion of the results. And then with full working committee support of results and then the acquisition of uh, Mohawk Council of Acquisition formally accepts and work towards adopting recommendations to the election law. So that's my recommendation for another survey. <laughs> really good recommendations in there and uh, I want to thank you for making that presentation for us. All right, um, so we've done, we've had an opportunity to go through all of the uh, proposed amendments as well as uh, been able to take some questions and comments from the community and, and ask if there's any final comments, questions from anybody that's here. So, um, as we've said, that we will take these all back. The working committee is here. This is everything is being recorded. There are notes being taken for all of the recommendations that have been put forward. Um, I think that it's important to note too that the presentation, um, the five uh, fundamentals that are being changed, this is not a um, take it all or leave it sort of um, position. Um, these are the recommended changes of what we've heard. The thing that uh, we have continuously said, uh, that I continuously said, is that we want to see at least some change to the law because our council has been committed to change and this is one of the fundamentals that we work under uh, whatever that change may be it may be all of them maybe uh, one of them maybe two of them hopefully uh, none of them but ultimately that is up to the community whether or not that's where we're going to be going uh, together so with that i want to thank all of you for uh, coming out and uh, we do have the other meeting scheduled in just nine now occurring August 3rd at 6 p.m. So, thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn for this evening, for this afternoon. Dennis, second. Vince, all in favor? <laughs> thank you very much. And that concludes this afternoon's information session.